and welcome back to Home Built Helps Tip of the Week. You can't get very far in building your aircraft without the need to precisely measure something. It might be the thickness of a skin, the diameter of a bolt, the size of a rivet. And of course we need a very accurate tool to make these measurements and the perfect tool for this is the digital caliper. Now if you're already familiar with this tool then you are exempt from this tip and should immediately get back to building. Otherwise take a look at what this wonderful tool can do for you. Let's look at some of the functions of this very easy and powerful tool. With this caliper we have jaws at the bottom and this is going to be for taking outside measurements. At the top we have a jaw for taking inside measurements. To use the tool is very simple. We close the jaws all the way and make sure it reads zero. If it doesn't we push the zero button. And of course we have a power button for on and off. And then the last important button over here is the unit of measurement that we choose to use. So for example we can have decimal inches, we can have fractional inches, and we can also have millimeters. We have a thumb wheel which just facilitates moving it carefully and slowly. Of course you can just move it manually like that. And then we also have a locking thumb screw up at the top if we want to take a measurement and lock it in place so that it doesn't move if we want to carry it around. At the far end we have the tool that allows us to measure depth and that moves in and out as we open the jaws. One more time. Fractions. There we go. 11 sixty-fourths. Now who would want that? But guess what? Sometimes you pick up a drawing or you're doing some work, woodworking, whatever, they tell you that you need to go and measure something 7 one twenty-eighths. Not really, but they might tell you that you're going to do like 3 30 seconds or something like that. And it comes in handy if you want to check things like that are measured in fractions like this uni bit. Uh, 3 eighths of an inch right there. So let's just see right there. 3 eighths of an inch. And that's something. The tip looks like it is quarter. Let's see, right about there. Quarter inch, 5 sixteenths. Next one down, 5 sixteenths. So that's pretty cool. Just a basic half inch drill. It's still a half inch drill. Somebody turned down the shank, probably to make it fit in a 3 eighths chuck. Pretty close, a little bit oversized, but it probably went into that chuck. What else do we have? We got some common things like this bolt. This is an aircraft bolt, aircraft quality bolt, AN hardware. And it measures 5 sixteenths, which would be a dash 5 bolt. Just for curiosity, what does a dash 5 bolt have as far as head size? It's a half inch. Here we got a drill bit. Very handy. You pick it up. You want a quarter inch bit, 3 sixteenths, whatever. Put it in your new handy dandy. It's a little bit bigger, 27 one twenty-eighths. Let's try it. I'll reset it. Zero. Try it again. Try it out on the knife edges. Well, I guess it's not exactly quarter. Now we can change this, and it's 5.32 millimeters. It is 0.2095 inches. So it's not a quarter inch drill. So we got some. 3 sixteenths hardware, back to fractions, 3 sixteenths, happens to have a 3 eighths head. Length is 1 and 53 1 twenty-eighths, or 35, almost 36 millimeters, 1.4 and something inches. Tubing usually measured by outside diameter. 
one and five eighths wall thickness, usually done in thousands, yep. but in any case, it's uh, close to a sixteenth. We've got some flat stock, usually measured by the thickness. It's a 060, so that's a sixteenth of an inch. Should be very close when we go back to there. Yep, one sixteenth. We've got some more pieces like sheet sock. Three one twenty eighths. So it's not a fractional measurement per se. So we're going to go to inches. inches right here, and it's a twenty thousandths piece of sheet aluminum. And then this guy. It's a 40 thousandths. And sometimes I'll grab a rivet and want to really confirm what size it is before drilling. And when dealing with brake linings, making sure they're within spec. And what is the inside diameter of that radiator hose? Because we aren't machinists, we probably don't need a very expensive caliper. These units in about the $20 range are just fine for the purposes we need in building an aircraft. Uh, you might consider the maximum size that you can measure based on the jaw size. They do make these longer so that you can open up and have even larger jaws, so that just kind of depends and most of them do have abilities for outside and inside measurement and most of them have a depth gauge. I would tend to stay with metal like stainless steel as opposed to plastic and most of them take a button type battery for the electronics in the middle and of course to me the most important feature is that it allows you to measure in decimal inches fractional inches and also millimeters because uh, all three of those are actually quite common uh, depending on what type of uh, aircraft you're building whether the plans are based on millimeters or the uh, inch foot inch unit of measure and then fractions are always nice when we're just trying to round off to quarters half sixteenths things like that but uh, going on to the likes of Amazon and eBay, you will find uh, quite a variety of these calipers. And I don't have any suggestions beyond making sure the features are there that you want in a basic caliper. And I can assure you, this will become one of your most useful tools in your home building arsenal. Now please, everyone, back to building.